Hello and welcome to Educo Motivation. In this video, you'll learn all about the Law of Attraction, one of the 12 laws of the universe and the fourth in our series. You'll discover the power of attraction and how by matching the frequency of the good that you desire, you can have it. You'll also learn the three steps to attracting anything you want, along with the pitfalls that prevent attraction working for most people. So let's get started. The Law of Attraction, one of the 12 laws of the universe, decrees that your thoughts are magnetic. They vibrate at a certain frequency and they attract all that resonates on that same frequency. So match the frequency of the good that you desire and you will get it. Of course, the analogy most often used to describe the law of attraction is a magnet. And while this usually refers to thoughts attracting things of a like nature, it is also reflective of your body's electromagnetic field. So to really appreciate the concept of attraction, you need to understand how your body creates this magnetic force. Scientifically, magnetic forces are generated through polarity. Each magnet has a north pole and a south pole, with one end generating a positive charge and the other end generating a negative charge. This polarity or differential between the two ends generates an electromagnetic field. We see this with planet Earth. It generates an electromagnetic field that deflects the sun's photons, preserves our atmosphere and allows life to thrive on Earth. Your body is also a magnet. Your chakras refer to seven specific energy centers within your body. The word chakra literally means wheel in Sanskrit and symbolizes the flow of energy in your body. As a result of their electromagnetic nature, each chakra creates a rotating vortex which is projected outwards on both sides of the body. And because each chakra is a rotating vortex, they function like a magnet. They attract and pull energy to themselves. Your mind and brain refer to your north pole or highest chakra called the crown chakra, while your south pole refers to the lowest chakra at the base of your spine called the root chakra. Your state of mind determines the flow of energy between these chakras. If you think negative thoughts, your body generates a corresponding biochemical signature and the subsequent feelings disrupt the flow of this energy. This causes you to draw energy from this invisible field and store it in your body. Conversely, positive thought keeps the energy free-flowing and maximizes the electromagnetic field. Persistent negative thoughts substantially disrupt the electrical charge running through your body, which significantly weakens the field of electromagnetic energy that surrounds it. This effectively hits the dimmer switch on your biological magnet. Your body becomes more matter and less energy, more particle and less wave. Thought provides the impetus to maximize or minimize this electromagnetic energy. Thought itself is nothing but an impulse of energy and you originate thought with your conscious mind. This thought triggers associated feelings in your subconscious mind and together they move your body to take the necessary action to manifest these very things. But how does this work? Well, your thoughts determine your biochemistry. This refers to the cascade of chemicals your body releases in response to your thoughts. And your emotions are heavily influenced by these biochemicals. So if you feel stressed, this emotion was triggered by fear-based thoughts, which produced elevated levels of the biochemicals adrenaline and cortisol in your system. Conversely, if you feel happy, this emotion was triggered by positive thoughts, which produced elevated levels of dopamine, serotonin and endorphins in your system. Your subconscious mind will only accept thoughts commensurate to your emotional state. This is why it is imperative that you create the right emotional state when programming your mind. So when you feel gratitude, abundance, love and harmony, your subconscious mind is in a very receptive state and is malleable to these corresponding thoughts. Conversely, if you feel stress, anxiety or fear, then your body is in the throes of its fight or flight response and such biochemicals will not allow effective access to your subconscious mind. 
Put differently, depending on your state, what you think about, you bring about. What you focus on grows. Thoughts held in mind reproduce after their kind. You literally change energy into energy, you do it all the time, and you are completely oblivious to it. So to create a compelling future, your thoughts and emotions need to be in harmony. Thoughts provide the electrical charge, emotions provide the magnetic charge, and together they create your electromagnetic field. Your electromagnetic signature determines what you will attract into your life. Essential to this process is creating and sustaining heightened emotions such as love, peace, serenity, gratitude, happiness, compassion, kindness and selflessness. Continuously living from these emotional states irrespective of your external circumstances locks you onto the frequency of the life you want. So if your dominant thoughts are focused on the things you want to be, do and have, then you magnetically attract these things into your life. This will bring you joy, happiness and fulfillment. Conversely, if you spend your time thinking about the things you don't want, then you will continue to attract these very things. You'll fuel a perpetual cycle of pain, suffering and hardship. Unfortunately, most people practice feeling negative emotions each and every day. Anger, hatred, jealousy, fear and resentment are their default state of being. They are literally making a habit of attracting the things they do not want. Furthermore, your heart and your emotions are inextricably linked. The heart is the universal symbol for love, and love is the most powerful emotion when it comes to attraction. Pioneering work by J. Andrew Armour, MD, PhD, led to the discovery of the heart brain. With some 40,000 neurons, the heart has a nervous system that functions independently of the brain. In effect, the heart literally has a mind of its own. It beats before the brain forms in a fetus and continues to beat after the brain dies, at least until the oxygen runs out. Furthermore, according to the HeartMath Institute, the magnetic field produced by the heart is more than 100 times greater in strength than the field generated by the brain and can be detected up to 3 feet away from the body in all directions. We are literally broadcasting our emotions to those around us and the electromagnetic energy within this field changes depending on our emotional state. Heightened emotions of the heart produce coherence in brainwave patterns and prime your brain to create your ideal future. The greater this coherence, the more potent the energy, the more powerful your top waves penetrate time and space. So how does all of this relate to the law of attraction? Simply put, we can whittle it all down to a neat phrase. Send a positive out, get a positive back. Send a negative out, get a negative back. You might not get it back instantly, but you will get it back. If you want to see the law of attraction in its simplest form, then give a friendly smile to everyone you meet. You'll immediately attract a smile in return. If you continuously think prosperous thoughts irrespective of your current circumstances, then you will attract prosperity in the future because like attracts like. Positive thinking supercharges motivation, fuels expectancy, drives action and gets results. But if you put a crown on circumstance, if you keep focusing on the negative side of everything, then you will continue to attract negative outcomes. Energy attracts like energy. You'll be stuck on the frequency of your problems and you'll be tuning into nothing but more problems. Albert Einstein knew this when he said, We cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we used when we created them. Match the frequency of the reality you want and you cannot help but get that reality. Now what you have to understand here is that the law of attraction is in fact underpinned by the law of vibration. Attraction refers to attracting things into your life that are in harmony with your dominant thoughts. Vibration refers to tuning into the frequency of the thing that you desire and staying there until you get it. So everything operates on frequencies and a frequency is a level of vibration. Your brain is an electronic switching station and it functions on frequencies. Feeling is a conscious awareness of the vibration you are in. If you feel good, you are in a positive vibration. If you feel bad, you are in a negative vibration. 
You can't attract the things you want to be, do or have if you are in a negative vibration most of the time. So you are in a positive vibration if you are feeling happy, passionate, grateful, excited, eager, thankful and energized. Conversely, you are in a negative vibration if you are feeling sad, depressed, fearful, anxious, jealous, angry, resentful or stressed. Now it's important to realize here that there are an infinite number of frequencies. Think of them as an infinite number of straight lines stacked one on top of the other. Each line represents a level of vibration or a level of awareness. We could take a subsection of these frequencies right now and it would be representative of your life today. At the lower end of this sample is the frequency you are on right now. Your dream life already exists in your imagination on a frequency that is an order of magnitude higher than the one you are on. The law of attraction requires that you go there in the imagination and see the good that you desire. The law of vibration requires you to lock into this frequency by holding the image of the thing you want on the screen of your mind and feeling excited that the good you seek is on its way. The laws of attraction and vibration work in unison to create your life experience. You can't have one without the other. If you're not happy with what you're attracting into your life right now, it's because you're on the wrong frequency and you're using the wrong tools. You're going by your five senses. You're going by what you see, hear, smell, taste and touch. You're letting your present conditions and circumstances dictate your frequency. It's like tuning into a certain channel on TV. You only get the programs that are on that frequency. You have to change the channel to go to a different frequency to get different programs. So we use our conscious mind to access our imagination and build an image of the good that we desire. Repeated visualization and affirmations impress it upon our subconscious or universal mind which turns it into a desire. This desire changes the vibration your body is in and compels it to take the necessary action. If you believe your situation is hopeless, that vibration ensures inaction. If you believe your dream is unfolding, that vibration compels action. So it's the vibration that causes you to act and the action sets up the attraction. Notice the word action actually makes up the last six letters of the word attraction. It's this action attraction that alters the results you get. Now you really need to get this. The desire changes the vibration. The vibration changes the action. The action sets up an attraction. The attraction determines your results. Let me repeat that again. The desire changes the vibration. The vibration changes the action. The action sets up an attraction. The attraction determines the results. If you wish to leverage the law of attraction to bring about dramatic improvements in your health, wealth and happiness, then you need to utilize the three steps to attraction. These are Step 1. Ask Step 2. Believe Step 3. Receive Okay, so let's look at Step 1. Ask The first step in the law of attraction is to ask the universe for what you want. This refers to what you think about, talk about, read about and pay attention to. You need to ensure there is no contradiction across what you think, say, feel and do. It's really down to the type of energy you give off. It must be aligned, consistent and in harmony with your goal. So if you know what you want, ask for it, are receptive to it and act as if it's coming, then it will come. All manifestation ultimately starts with an idea conceived in the human mind. It's why you can't actually buy an original painting, because the original is in the mind of the artist. The painting itself is just a replica of the idea. This idea has psychic coordinates. It refers to a place in your imagination, and you have to go there and bring it here. You have to see the world from the perspective of that location. That's exactly what an artist does. The brush strokes are made from the perspective of the imagination and this manifests the desired outcome. So you can't see the world from the perspective of your present conditions and circumstances. See it how you want it to be and not how it is. Fake it till you make it. Work from the perspective of the thing that you desire. See the world from that location. 
push circumstances to the edge of your awareness and view everything through the lens of your imagination. So hold the image of the thing you want in mind and make all your decisions from that viewpoint. Steve Jobs put it this way, You can't connect the dots looking forward, you can only connect them looking backwards. So you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in your future. You have to trust in something, your gut, destiny, life, karma, whatever. This approach has never let me down and it has made all the difference in my life. So work from your goal back to your present and not from your present forward to your goal. I'll say that again. You need to work from your goal back to your present and not from your present forward to your goal. What do I mean by that? Well, the human mind is psycho-cybernetic in nature. This means it's goal-oriented. It must have a clear image to work with. I say image because the mind thinks in pictures, not in words. Think of the thing you want and it flashes an image on the screen of your mind. The whole concept of attraction is to start with the end in mind. Work from this final destination and not towards it. Imagination is the time machine that takes you there now. So keep visualizing the things you want. Talk about them in the present tense as if you already have them. Buy clothes that fit your ideal physique and not your current physique. Every time you put your hands on the steering wheel of your current car, imagine you're holding the steering wheel of the car you want. As you drive around in your current car, imagine you're driving your dream car. Imagine that's what others see as they watch you drive by, and that's what you see as you look out. More than anything else, you have to feel the feeling of the wish fulfilled. Remember, feeling generates the magnetic charge. So feel how great it is to be driving your dream car and to be getting so much attention. This puts you on the necessary vibration to attract what you want. So this is working from your goal. This is living on the frequency of the thing you desire. Now you need to realize something important here. Attraction is love. Love is the highest level of vibration a human being is capable of. Love is the feeling that ignites the power of attraction. It's essential you pursue things you'd love to be, do and have and never settle for anything less than that. There is a key distinction here. If you settle for something less than what you really want, you are instantly on a vibration of lack and limitation. This is why you should never settle for anything less than what you want. Dissatisfaction is a creative state that fuels action. Your vibration or inner feeling needs to be one of scintillating excitement. You can only have this feeling if you are moving in the direction of something you absolutely love. You need to know the what and the why and forget the how. In other words, go after exactly what you want, know why you want it, and trust the forces of attraction will help you to manifest it. So you don't know how you are going to get it, but you know you are going to get it. Einstein knew this when he said, Imagination is more important than knowledge. Knowledge is limited. Imagination encircles the world. History is full of people who knew exactly what they wanted. They had no idea how to get it, but they had the fate required to make it happen. Think Tesla and electricity, Edison and the light bulb, the Wright brothers and the airplane, Jobs and the iPhone. The big problem most people have is lack of clarity. They want one thing one minute and another thing the next. This causes a state of confusion in the mind, which causes a diffusion in the energy. For attraction to work, we need the energy focused like a laser beam, not diffused like a light bulb. As Emerson put it, energy flows where attention goes. So focus your attention and you concentrate the amplitude of vibration. You concentrate the energy. To put this advice to work, you need to clearly define each and every goal you are striving towards. This must be set in the present tense and not the future tense. Remember, we are thinking from the goal and not to the goal. You already have the goal in your imagination. So think in terms of I have, I drive, I am or I weigh. If you think in terms of I will drive or I will weigh, then you are locking into a vibration that is always in the future. And so you'll never experience it in the present. You need to think descriptively in the present tense. 
Think in terms of, I drive a Porsche Taycan Turbo S in Carrera white metallic with black alloy wheels and carbon fibre trim. The more descriptive you can get, the more energy you give to the goal, the more powerful the attractor factor you set up. This level of definition is necessary for each and every goal if you are going to spark the law of attraction into action. You really need a crystal clear image in your mind that is a perfect representation of the exact thing you want. So go online, find images that are a perfect match to your goal, and download them to a folder on your smartphone. This is your digital vision board. Review these images first thing on waking every morning and last thing before you go to sleep every night. Really try to conjure up feelings of excitement and joy as you review the images and believe they are already yours. Step 2 in this 3-step attraction process is believe. Napoleon Hill put it well when he said, Whatever the mind can conceive and believe, it can achieve. So having the goal in mind is one thing, believing you will manifest it is something entirely different. You see, the moment your belief matches with any state, you fuse with it. You and the frequency of the thing you want are in harmonious vibration. And this union results in the activation and projection of the necessary plots, plans, conditions and circumstances to bring it out of the ether. This new conscious awareness becomes your vantage point from which you see the world and you will act accordingly. But if you don't think it's possible to achieve your goal, you'll never achieve it. As Henry Ford said, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you are right. If you think you lack the time, money, energy or know-how to achieve your goal, that is the vibration you are sending out to the universe. The universe will return to you the people, conditions and circumstances to ensure that will be the case. In order to create the necessary belief, you need to eradicate self-limiting thoughts and develop unwavering faith in the outcome you seek. This puts you on a collision course with your paradigm, which is a mental program that controls the vibration you are in. And the vibration you are in dictates what you will attract. Self-limiting thoughts are part of your paradigm, and your paradigm refers to a mental program operating in your subconscious mind. It's the sum total of your life experience to date. Everything up to this point in your life has impacted your mental conditioning. If you grew up with a scarcity of money, it negatively impacted your paradigm. If your parents habitually said things like, money doesn't grow on trees, or you can't have everything you want, or be realistic, it programmed your mind to view the world through a lens of lack and limitation. It tethers you to circumstance and clips the wings of your imagination. You need to override this paradigm for attraction to work. You do this by bombarding your subconscious mind with energy attuned to the frequency of the things you want. Techniques such as visualization, affirmations, gratitude and positive self-talk are the essential methodologies here. Einstein himself said that imagination is everything, it is the preview of life's coming attractions. Your imagination is the workshop of your mind. You can go there and build an image of the thing you want. This sets up the vibration. If you stay in this vibration, you will see outer reality shaping itself based upon the model of your imagination. But if opposing ideas sit within your paradigm, it will quickly extinguish the spark of attraction. You need to hold an idea of the thing you want in mind and continue to give it energy. The more energy you give it, the more you accelerate its amplitude of vibration, the more you engage the law of attraction. But you need to be 100% committed to the goal if you are going to do what is necessary to achieve it. As William Hutchinson Murray put it, Until one is committed, there is hesitancy, the chance to draw back, always in effectiveness. Considering all acts of initiative and creation, there is one elementary truth, the ignorance of which kills countless ideas and splendid plans, that the moment one definitely commits oneself, then providence moves too. All sorts of things occur to help one that would never otherwise have occurred. A whole stream of events issues from the decision, raising in one's favour all manner of unforeseen incidents and meetings and material assistance, which no man could have dreamt would have come his way. So commit to doing what is necessary to attain your goal. 
raise your standards and refuse to be derailed by any obstacles that arise. As Napoleon Bonaparte said, I see only my objective, the obstacles must give way. This is the attitude attraction demands if you wish to achieve your goal. Before you go to sleep each night, close your eyes and project yourself into the future. Think from the location of the goal. Create a vivid scene rich in color, sights, sounds, feeling, tastes, smells and sensations. Put the thing you want at the center of this scene. Make it bright, colorful and larger than life. Assume the feeling of the wish fulfilled. Really enjoy the sense of achievement. Hear your friends and family members congratulate you on your stunning attainment. Feel them pat you on the back, kiss you on the cheek, hug you and shake your hand. Notice the breeze on your face, the electricity in the air, the hair standing on the back of your neck and any other background sounds or sensations. Add movement or motion to the scene to make it even more lifelike. The more feeling and emotion you inject into the scene, the more you fuse with the idea, the more you speed up the vibration. Repeating this scene often ensures the idea is held in mind and kept in mind. Fortify the visualization with positive self-talk. This refers to supporting statements repeated perpetually. Statements like, I drive a Porsche Taycan Turbo S in Carrera White Metallic. I love the way it drives and I love all the attention it gets. Say it with meaning, energy and absolute conviction. Better yet, record these statements into your smartphone's dictation app and let it play while you are falling asleep and continue to play while you are asleep. This process of immersion overwrites previous conditioning and makes your mind malleable to the images required to succeed. This raises your vibration to a higher frequency, which attracts the good operating on that frequency. So visualize the things you want to happen in your life, get emotionally involved in the process, fuse with the idea, and the things you want must materialize. Realize that when you activate a higher frequency in your imagination, your five senses are ill-equipped to communicate with this realm. You're dealing with an invisible world, you're dealing with your creative faculties. You engage with the universal mind through your imagination. It communicates with you through your intuition. So when you put all of these methodologies into practice, always trust your gut instinct. If it's nudging you to take particular actions, then take those actions. Okay, so let's look at step number three, receive. At this stage, you know exactly what you want and you have absolute faith in its manifestation. This puts you into the physical vibration necessary to attain the good that you desire. This immediately activates the attraction process, but it also causes you to act. It moves your body to take the action required to transmute the image into its physical equivalent. In effect, we become what we think about most of the time. Thoughts objectify themselves. We don't get what we want, we get what we expect. So you must expect the thing you want to materialize. You must know it's already yours. But don't fool yourself here. This is not magic. There is a general misconception that you can attract anything you wish solely through positive visualization. While positive visualization is a key part of the process, it comes to nothing without physical action on your behalf. As Wallace D. Wattles stated, by thought, you can cause the gold in the hearts of the mountains to be impelled toward you, but it will not mine itself, refine itself, coin itself into double eagles, and come rolling along the roads seeking its way into your pocket. By thought, the thing you want is brought to you. By action, you receive it. Many people that watched the movie The Secret got excited about the law of attraction, but nothing changed in their lives. Why was that? Well, they failed to act in a manner that was aligned with the things they wished to attract. They didn't really believe they'd get the things they wanted, and so they didn't. If you consciously think you can't have something, subconsciously you create a what's-the-use mentality, which triggers an action and grinds the wheels of attraction to a halt. As Emerson put it, believe and your belief will help create the fact. But believe something is impossible, and that too will create the fact. Allow me to illustrate this concept of attraction through action with something we can all relate to. 
Professional golfers have long since subscribed to the maxim, the last thought in your mind is what happens to the golf ball. They developed sophisticated pre-shot routines built around this concept. In effect, right before they strike the golf ball, they stand back behind the ball and visualize the shot they want to play. They imagine perfect contact with the ball, they envisage the correct amount of spin and shot shape being imparted on the ball, and they visualize the ball landing beside the pen. However, is that all they do? Is this simple act of visualization enough to land the ball next to the pen? Absolutely not. They need to take action. They need to physically strike the ball in order to transmute their thought energy into a result on the physical plane. This attracts the outcome of pitching the ball beside the pen. What people fail to grasp after watching The Secret is that we exist in a physical dimension. We have to interact with our physical world in a physical way. Yes, at the quantum level our thought waves attract what resonates on the same frequency, but that does not negate the fact that we must physically engage our external environment. So the law of attraction is all about thinking the thoughts that create the feelings that compel the action required to succeed. Remember, you have to get intellectually involved with the idea via the conscious mind, emotionally involved with the idea via the subconscious mind, and physically involved with the idea via the body. Consider your present conditions and circumstances. The great thing about the law of attraction is that your present results reveal the quality of your past thoughts. Put differently, your dominant thoughts in the past have shaped your present conditions and circumstances. They have manifested everything you see in your surroundings. Your health, your relationships, your bank balance, your house, your car, everything originated from your dominant thoughts. The key word here is dominant. Fleeting thoughts have little impact. It is the thoughts you permit to persist, your default state of mind, that determines what you are attracting. So if you deliberately think about what you want in your mind, make that your dominant thought, then you will bring it into your life. Everything that exists in your life today is evidence of historical thinking. This refers to the good, the bad, and everything in between. Your life is a microcosm of thought waves you sent out that perpetuated the action which manifested as your current results. And no matter how dimly you view your current situation, realize that it can change dramatically, but only if you are willing to change. You are a sending station that's creating mental images of life's coming attractions. You truly are the architect of your own future. You just need to realize that the blueprint for your future is drawn from the thoughts you think today. Put differently, your thoughts are seeds, and the harvest you reap will depend on the seeds you plant. You can't plant carrot seeds and expect to harvest turnips. No matter how much you visualize the turnips, you'll still get carrots. So action is critical to attraction. You must act in a manner aligned with the images you're holding in your mind. James Allen put it well in his book, As a Man Thinketh. He said, A man's mind may be likened to a garden, which may be intelligently cultivated or allowed to run wild, but whether cultivated or neglected, it must and will bring forth. If no useful seeds are put into it, then an abundance of useless weed seeds will fall therein and will continue to produce their kind. In other words, nature abhors a vacuum. So if you fail to plant ideas supportive of your goal, the psychic seeds of fear, doubt and worry will set in. So something is always growing, something is always manifesting, you are either advancing towards your goal or retreating, you are either expanding or contracting. It's why you need to be proactive and not reactive. You need to deliberately condition your mind to succeed and not allow negative programming to set in from your external environment. If you're doing everything advised thus far, and you're still not attracting the results you seek, then your problem could be 1. Lack of alignment, or 2. Your paradigm. So what do I mean by lack of alignment? Well, if you continue to feel negative emotions like fear, lack and limitation, but try to think thoughts of abundance, then measurable effects can't be produced. This is because conscious thoughts need to be aligned with subconscious feelings in order to activate the law of attraction. 
It's no good thinking positive thoughts if they are not backed up by positive feelings. The subconscious mind and ultimately the body will reject thoughts of this nature. Remember, it is the feeling that produces the magnetic charge. Without the feeling, a disconnect remains between your mind and your body. So all thoughts must be backed up by a corresponding feeling for attraction to work. Sustain these positive emotions on a daily basis and your mind and body will work in unison with the law of attraction to create the future you want. In effect, you'll have moved on to a higher frequency and you'll be broadcasting a different electromagnetic signature of energy into the field. Further to this alignment issue, the aforementioned paradigm might be your limiting step. You need to become aware of the paradigms that are keeping you trapped in your current reality. A fast way to pinpoint these paradigms is to think about the goal you wish to attain and ask the question, why can't I achieve it? The reasons you list are part of your paradigm. This gives you insights into your internal blockages. Remember, we said that a paradigm is a mental program that has almost exclusive control over your habitual behavior. So you likely have negative habits in your life that are preventing your success. Remember, your self-image is also part of your paradigm. As Maxwell Maltz put it, you can never outperform your own self-image. Perhaps you wish to lose weight, but you keep self-sabotaging. You see yourself as a fat person, so you think fat, you talk fat, you eat fat, you feel fat, and you act fat. You look in the mirror, feel bad about yourself, which triggers comfort eating and makes matters worse. In this example, you should not be working from the image in the mirror. You should be working from the image in your mind. Remember, we work from the goal and not to the goal. So don't look in the mirror. Instead, if you are working from the mental image of your perfect physique, this triggers a higher order vibration. You feel good about this image and your subconscious mind compels actions aligned with it. In fact, you should take deliberate actions from the goal. Instead of buying clothes to fit your current physique, buy clothes that fit your ideal physique. Get one of those old analog weighing scales, dial back the starting point so that when you hop on the scales, it shows your ideal weight now. Taking such actions in the present changes your self-image. Before long, you fuse with the idea and bring it into your reality. You'll think, talk, act and eat like someone with a ripped physique. This is how you use the law of attraction to your advantage. Furthermore, you need to ensure everything you think, say and do vibrates at the level of positive expectancy, gratitude and happiness. Here's how you do it. Record your daily wins in a wins journal and read it every day. Create a gratitude journal where you record things you are grateful for and read this daily too. Review your vision board every single day. Listen to positive self-talk recordings on repeat. Listen to music that boosts your mood. Stay away from people that bring you down. Surround yourself with people that encourage you. Read autobiographies from people that have achieved the things you want. Practice meditation and mindfulness. Go for long walks in nature and feel so happy and grateful now that everything you want has happened. All of these actions powerfully raise your level of vibration, and when you shift the tectonic plates of your thinking, providence shifts too. The universe will respond by bringing people, circumstances and events into your life that will help your desires to materialize. So remember, thought always precedes results. The universe doesn't mind if your thoughts are positive or negative, it simply ensures you get what you expect. In this regard, consider your future reality as it exists right now, vibrating as unmaterialized energy in the quantum field. Visualize this future as the vibration of a tuning fork that has just been struck. The sound you hear is a vibration moving on a specific frequency. Visualize yourself as another tuning fork in harmonious vibration with the quantum possibility in your future. The longer you tune your energy into that frequency, the more you connect to your future reality, the sooner you attract the things you want. So keep your mind fixated only on the things you want, visualize yourself in possession of these very things, and keep taking action until these things materialize.
Do that and you'll live an incredible life filled with happiness and abundance. Be sure to click the next video on your screen right now. This features the next law in our series, The Law of Action. It reveals how you can become a relentless action taker, capable of getting results that are beyond extraordinary. Keep up to date with our latest videos by hitting subscribe and turning on notifications. Please show your support by clicking like.